thanks for joining me today. We're going to get have an awesome time talking about generative AI and Kindrel's place in this. Yeah. Give me a little background on what we're talking about today. So Kindrel has been taking a look at generative AI technology for the better part of about a year. I think our journey started October of last year. It, it, it's hard to believe that so much has happened in such a short amount of time. But um, our focus is really on uh, responsible adoption of generative AI, security, and helping our customers navigate the journey that is understanding how to adopt such a disruptive technology in their organization. We have seen uh, generative AI take a whole new shape. And one of the things that is really interesting is it's brought forth a conversation for us around responsibility. Yeah. Right. And, you know, Microsoft has had responsible AI principles all the way back to, you know, 2019. And then we've continued to revise them. And we use six kind of pillars for them. Um, you know, we talk about fairness. We talk about reliability and safety. I'll use some examples here in a minute. But, like, we talk about privacy and security, uh, inclusiveness. Mm -hmm. But we also talk about transparency. And then ultimately what you and I will talk a little bit about is, like, accountability. What does that look like, right? And, yeah. and, and across the board. And, you know, if I'm sitting there and I think about this and the fairness... One of the challenges that we have as humans is we have an unconscious bias, right? And this is an opportunity for us to uh, make sure that whatever models we are training it is to not have that be impeding it, right? Well, I mean, that's one aspect of it, right? Yeah. Um, you know, the reliability and safety is one that's interesting for me because I think of, you know, self-driving cars, right? Safety is a major concern. Like, what happens if, you know, the system does not recognize or obey the traffic laws? And, you know, it's not just safety of the large language model itself. And that's the thing, that's the big difference between what enterprises are looking for and what Microsoft is building for. Microsoft is building to make sure that the large language models, the generative AI engines that are being created <clears throat> meet those safety and, and standards and reliability standards and transparency standards. But enterprises are looking for something a little bit different. They want to make sure that their users are using the technology in a responsible way. They want to make sure that their copyright information is being protected and that they're not violating other copyright standards. Which is really where we kind of piggyback into that next piece, really, which is around that privacy and security, right? Absolutely. We'll talk a lot about that, but like they need to be able to respect that personal data and content. And we'll talk a lot about this in just a moment. Right. But, you know, we talk about inclusiveness, right? You got to be able to include people of all backgrounds. And so when we talk about our AI principles and we also talk about transparency, right? We, we talk about being able to um, use the systems in a way that provides clear and meaningful information. We've spent a lot of time in this past year really listening to our customers and trying to understand where their needs fall in regards to this technology because it's one thing to have such a capable tool, but it's another thing for it to be used by organizations in a way that meets their business objectives. And what I've heard actually having talked to a number of CDOs, CIOs, CISOs is that every organization, public and private sector alike, are actually right now working on their adoption journey for generative AI technology. Most organizations have had some kind of AI technology in the past, but being able to give this power to the end users, the consumers, even your customers, creates a lot of new areas that you need to have a strategy around. And it's, what are your threat vectors that are gonna be changing? Because now you've got this technology that can generate new content and use your existing data in ways that you weren't expecting it to before. Um, what are your users going to be using this technology to do? Or do you want everyone to be able to generate code in your organization and be able to compile that code using free of freely available compilers? Do you want everyone to be able to create pictures and videos based on individual text? And is that going to meet your corporate standards for branding and marketing? And also, 
What are you going to do about your intellectual property and your compliance objectives? What are your auditors thinking about how your data is being handled by this new technology? And so our approach, and this is something that we've created based on that feedback, is to start with talking to our customers and helping them navigate that, starting to talk through HR policies. Uh, your service desk knowledge articles, information security incident response, talking to how we can actually govern data within your organization, as well as provide access to this technology in a way that's responsible and manages cost as well as security. So it sounds like one of the, the pieces is, is, you know, it's like we're giving them the tools, but let's make sure they know how to use the tools and then we give them the right right guardrails around that so that they don't, you know, you know, go off the rails so to speak. Yeah. And and they so tell me a little bit about how you're thinking about this from a like responsible adoption what that looks like. Well, it it starts at the very beginning, right? We have to understand what are you going to use this technology for? What are your thoughts around it right now? What are your standards and what kind of compliance objectives do you have? And then we want to talk about your users. The people that are actually using this technology need education and they need to understand how to adopt, how to use it correctly. You can't just give someone Bing Chat Enterprise and say go if you want them to treat it in a certain way. Well, it's very similar to all of this generative AI, right? Where we talk about like, how do you prompt it correctly, right? Yeah. It takes a little bit of learning on how to prompt it, but I think it also takes a little bit of about that same approach to how you want to embrace this within the enterprise. That's true. But we do need to look at the cloud adoption journey and apply that to AI right now and build on the frameworks and build on the standards that will allow our customers to adopt AI responsibly and make sure that security and cost management, like you said, FinOps is a good example. Um, you know, if you've got a site license and you've got, a, you know, licenses with Microsoft for, for Azure OpenAI or Bing Chat Enterprise or Copilot, you don't want your users going somewhere else. You want them to leverage the investments that you've made. Yep. And, you know, Kindrel's response includes controls around that to make sure that users are leveraging your existing investments in AI technology. Excellent. You, one of the things that you have done is you've kind of built an entire model, I'd say start to finish, right? From, from advisor and consulting to management and all the way through to, and like, and, and then deployment. Tell me a little bit about kind of your thoughts around this. Yeah. So um, our response to responsible adoption of generative AI is a kind of a cohesive 360 degree view of, um, of AI adoption. And it includes consulting led initiatives where we understand your objectives, we understand your security requirements, we understand your HR requirements, your operational change management requirements, and we work with you to understand how to adopt that in a way that makes sense for your organization. It's um, have you built your HR acceptable use policy to include generative AI? Are you updating your annual security training for your users to include generative AI principles? Have you considered what would happen if a user calls the service desk and says, hey, you know, my search prompts that I'm using for generative AI are not working correctly and this um, engine is starting to act in a way that I wasn't expecting it to? You know, making sure that every department including operations and support and um, HR, have an, an understanding of how this technology is going to work once it's in your environment, and that you have plans and policies and controls in place to support that. And wow. Kindrel has built some innovative IP um, in order to help manage the framework around that. Awesome. Well, Jerry, thank you so much. I think we're now at a at a point where we're going to let our uh, people see what it looks like. Yeah, I'm looking forward to showing you a demo of everything. Um, yeah, it's going to be really exciting. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very excited to share with you what we are working on at Kindrel.
Our customers are asking us to help them implement their generative AI strategies and understand Kindrel's point of view on this new disruptive technology that their employees, developers, and even customers want to use to assist them in interacting in a more productive way. What you are looking at is a virtual appliance similar to a firewall, proxy, or gateway. It's designed to connect personas or custom applications to generative AI large language models, either public like Azure OpenAI or private like Copilot or Hugging Face. This service is based on open Kubernetes, so it can reside on premise, on AKS, on Azure Stack HCI or Stack Edge, in the Azure Cloud or anywhere you run your Kubernetes containers. With this solution, we have the ability to enable role-based access control so you can decide which users have access to which models. We're using Azure OpenAI and Dolly 3 here and what they have permissions to query with it. We can help you designate that certain users only have access to text sessions, others to have images and video access, or if you want to limit code creation to specific developers. We also can configure which large language models your users can access, so they're using the models that you have invested in for your organization and that have been pre-approved for use. The tool is enabled with something we're calling policy packs, which are configured to enforce your compliance and policy objectives for your organization. These policy packs are customized to your business needs and can include items like trade secrets, proprietary IP, internal confidential data, and proprietary information that you don't want to even go to the model for processing. We log and archive every query and response so your organization can see how GenAI is being used and your InfoSec teams and auditors have access to the data they need. If you are an organization that is concerned about regional or industry compliance like HIPAA, GDPR, SOX, Freedom of Information Act requests and others, we can help your teams generate the data you need to prove that you can pass audit. This is great for custom applications that need access to these security features, and you can use this capability to track the interactions between your custom apps and the LLMs they access. We can even notify administrators if the interactions start to deviate or hallucinate from the expected result. In addition, we have cost management and dashboard functionality, so we can help you control costs for premium services for generative AI tools. We have other features such as quarantining where a human in the loop is needed to release content to the models or the users if you need additional reviews, if you need that additional review step. The tool can also query multiple LLMs simultaneously and reconcile content to mitigate bias and hallucinations and to reduce the possibility of incorrect or erroneous code results. If you're interested in hearing more, we'd love to hear from you. Click connect with us on the Kindrel partner page or stop by our booth if you're on site at Ignite or email me directly at jerry.lack at kindrel.com.